Right, hold on, hold on. First, yes, Clive, you are first. Hello and welcome. Hi, Foster Stephen. Hi, Grievous Mink. Hi, Jennifer. <laughs> We're all here. And if you give me, hold on one second. One second. Come on, come on. When you want to do something quickly, that's when nothing ever works. Or is it just me? How is everyone today while I play about with this? <laughs> Are we all okay? Um, Are we all doing okay on this? Lovely Wednesday. Just pretend that I'm not actually doing something. Right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yay! <laughs> it worked! <laughs> thank you, Foster Stephen, and thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> Right, if, yeah. There's a couple more that I want to put on that. I've not put them on yet, but they will be there soon. <laughs> There's quite a lot of different bits that I forget about until I actually come on and I'm like, oh, I wish I'd done that as well. But that's a start. And to be honest, I'll probably have forgotten about it by the time it comes to tomorrow. So I'll have forgotten to change it. But I'll try and keep on top of that. <laughs> Hydrate, thank you, Gravy Smink. That's a good way to start. <laughs> the girl who bakes. Hello, how are you? I found your tw Twitch yesterday, so I, I gave you a wee follow. Or was that this morning? It might have been today, I'm not sure. But I followed you anyway. So everything's a bit hectic today because I realised about half an hour ago <laughs> that I didn't have half of the ingredients for what I wanted to do today. Oh, I needed that water. Thank you, Mink. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so about, it's probably about quarter past three, I realized that I did not have very many um, of the ingredients I wanted, so I had to nip to the shop. And of course, um, the whole, like the schools are back here, so it was just after the schools finished and the roads were so busy so what normally would have taken me about 15 minutes took me quite a bit longer so <laughs> it's a bit of a mad rush to get back <laughs> points uh, i should do because i think that's a uh is that a default one let me just check yeah it should be there but it's obviously not come on. Maybe I've not got my points um, set up. That's possible. Oh, there we go. Oh, I wonder why it takes so long. <laughs> That's a fun thing for a result of Layla. <laughs> Oh, your internet is out. Oh no, that is not good. You just don't realise how much you rely on the internet until you can't have it and you can't use it and you're like, how am I supposed to live my life <laughs> without the internet? Oh, I'm enjoying this. 100, 171 is very exciting. Cosmic Cat, how are you today? Nice to see you. Happy Wednesday. Right, so I think... I think I'm assuming from how we're doing here that everybody's happy with my volumes of things and that I don't need to change anything. <laughs> I'm mostly excited for the veggies. Well, 
If that's the case, call, uh, Cloud, I am glad that I went to the shop because <laughs> when I checked, it would have been a butter bean and sweet corn chilli, which, I mean, it may be, that may be not be such a bad thing, but it sounds a bit strange. So I've got a load more other stuff. So it's going to be much more exciting now. And the cornbread gravy is mink. I'm quite excited about the cornbread because I've never actually made it before. Um, I think it's a bit easier, I think it's an easier thing to do gluten free because a lot of it is the cornmeal. So we'll see, um, it'll be interesting. I have never actually tried it, so I don't know what it's supposed to taste like. <laughs> I'm assuming it'll taste a bit like, um, well, corn in bread. <laughs> Although I really struggled, I was surprised. So, so many of the recipes were sweet recipes. Is that normal? That surprised me because I always like I've always seen it served with chili, so I don't know if you would normally have a sweet cornbread with savoury chili, or if I was just looking in the wrong place. But I found one, and it's support. I think it's supposed to be sweet, but they say to like leave out just a couple of ingredients to make it a savoury one. So that's what we're gonna do because the thought of a sweet cornbread with a veggie chili sounds a bit strange. So we're gonna do it savoury. I think that'll be nicer. All about the cornbread. <laughs> Menu sounds delicious. Oh, I hope so. It's one I love, love chili. I'm such a big fan. I don't, I don't tend to do it too spicy um, because my tummy doesn't do well with spice. So I'll put a little bit in and then I'll kind of leave it up to people. If I'm serving it to other people, I'll give them the choice that they can add some more chili powder or some chili sauce or something. But then if people want it a bit less hot then there'll always be sort of sour cream or yogurt or something so i always think that's a good a good thing to do and then some like everybody gets gets it the way they want it kind of thing it can be sweet okay because that is definitely what most of the recipes seem to be which i was surprised that maybe i'll try and make it sweet one day so if it's sweet does that mean that you just eat it as it is, would you have it with something? Or would you have the sweet cornbread with the chilli as well? It's baffling me a wee bit. Ah, to offset some of the heat from the chilli. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I think I would normally have it with rice. But I feel like we've had quite a lot of rice recently, especially with the paella that I made yesterday. So I thought this will be something a wee bit more interesting. A wee bit different. Right, so I think what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start with, I'm just, oh that, <laughs> at first I thought my music was broken, but I think it is supposed to sound like that. Right, not sweet as in dessert, but a little sugar in a batter. Ah, okay, there's a nice salty sweetness to cornbread. Right, well since you guys are the experts, because I think you guys obviously know a lot more about cornbread than I do, would you recommend I try the sweet one? I can maybe add a little bit in. Because I think, what was the recipe? Um, yeah, so the, they say the optional is, you can either add a little bit of honey or a little bit of sugar. You make it your way. It's a recipe. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, hold on. Will it let me post the recipe in here? So this is the one I'm going to use. Um, Foster Stephen. Um, it says all purpose flour, one cup all purpose flour and one cup yellow cornmeal. So I got this stuff. Indian head stone ground yellow cornmeal and I think it is like proper American because it says 32 ounces hydrate thank you Dana doll <laughs> and hello <laughs> I 
I don't think I have honey, but have maple syrup. Would that work? I'm not sure. I think I'll we'll have a think while I'm making the rest of the batter, and then I'll see how I feel. To me, it seems a bit strange. <laughs> I'm not sure, and I feel like because I, th I think cornbread's a southern recipe, and I feel like they do enjoy their sweet things, and I'm not overly a huge fan. So I might just not. Yeah, I think I might just stick with without the the sweetness because I'd hate to, to add it and then go, I don't like this. <laughs> and then I've just got chilli and nothing to dip in it. So I think, yeah, I think we'll do that. Honey butter. Is that a, like, can you buy that or is that, do you just mix butter and honey together? Because I've never seen that before. But the, if there's one thing I cannot eat, it's honey. <laughs> I can't, I can't do it. I used to get given it when I, if I was ill, if I had a cold when I was little, um, I used to get fed cups of hot water with honey in or like um, squash or cordial with hot water and honey in. And since then, I can't stand the stuff. <laughs> so if maple syrup butter was a thing, then I might be more willing to try that. <laughs> I'm sure honey butter, if you like honey, is delicious, but it's, I'll eat most things, but that's one thing I just can't. There's just something about it. Actually, it, it gives me goosebumps thinking about it. <laughs> I don't know why it's so strange, but uh, right, what do we need? So we're, we'll get another one of these cup recipes. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a cup and use it and just use it throughout and we'll see what happens. I don't know what kind of size of cup we're talking. Um, I would always have said, oh, I can't reach. Like that maybe, is that a cup size? Hold on a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. Are these cups? <gasps> Look what I've just found. Oh, that's genius. <laughs> that's a cup. <laughs> I just realised in the bottom of my drawer, I was like, I'm sure I've got more measuring things. And I've got a feeling. So apparently one cup is 250 millilitres. Bean chilli sounds lovely. I do hope so. It's been a while since I've made one. And I do tend, if I make a chilli, I tend to make a meat chilli or a corn chilli. I'm not as keen on the corn chilli because I find that the corn mince, it's a bit kind of powdery and, and I don't really love the text, like the consistency and the texture of it. So I thought this would be a good, a good alternative. One cup American is 250 mils. And then it's even got the wee bits on the side. Oh, thank you very much for your full squiggle tea. What a good name. I hope you're well. Happy Wednesday. Um, it's even got the little measurements on the front. So I wish I'd found this a long time ago. <laughs> because I'd been avoiding um, using recipes with cups because I was like, I've got no idea how much a cup is. And I'll, ru I'll end up ruining the recipe because the measurements will be all wrong. So that's good. Yeah, I'm not sure, Grievous Mink, I'm not sure. <laughs> right, so basically, the regular points are the channel points, and that's the ones that you can use in the chat, where you can, like, redeem the stuff that, that you see in the chat. I'm not into, I think confetti points, I think that basically means then if I was to do, like, a giveaway, or if I was to do something, like, myself personally, then you can use the confetti points for that. Or maybe I can say like the first, the first person to 10,000 confetti points gets something. <laughs> I think that's the difference between the two, but I'm not honestly too sure. I saw it in, when I was setting it up and I thought, I don't want to not have it, but I don't fully know what it is. <laughs> so, so yeah, so you've got your channel points, which are the chat ones. Um, and that'll be the ones where you're the 3,000. 
and then the confetti points I've not actually done anything with so though I will do something at some point I was thinking I might actually once I know that I can ship my herbs worldwide when I get that sorted I might do a wee giveaway or something of some herbs so that's the plan but yeah I'll need to figure that out first <laughs> Yeah, there's so many different little bits to twitch that I feel like I'm I'm just about there, but there's definitely a few things I kind of go, yeah, not a clue. And I have emotes coming. I'm so disappointed that they're still not up, but they've been under approval, pending approval for about a week and a half now. And I've so I've emailed Twitch and be like, can we get them to go, please? <laughs> so hopefully it won't be too much longer, but. Herbs giveaway, yeah. I thought that would be quite a good one. Um, because I'm, if I, I'm, I'm biased, but they are quite nice. Okay, so I want to do... Okay, so I want to do the wet and dry ingredients separately. So now is it going to take a while for approval? Yeah, I think, and I think because I'm still quite new, it's probably just taking a bit longer, but I'm just impatient when it comes to these things. Because <laughs> I do really like the ones that I managed to get, but it'll happen eventually. <laughs> okay. So, I'll stick my other one on. And then you can see. So, first of all, we want a cup. So, are we thinking that... Hold on, is there baking powder as well? Yes. So, all-purpose flour, I think, is plain flour. I think. So, I'm going to use plain flour. And then I... So it's gluten-free plain flour that I'm using. So I'm going to use, um, yeah, a cup of this after three months, I think. Well, that would be good. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe just because it's my first one. So I'll continue to be impatient. But <laughs> oh, and it said sift them. So, okay. really? <laughs> That's disappointing. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was really loud. I've heard it would take two to three weeks at a time. <gasps> yeah, I, that's where I saw, I think they said that the longest it can take is about two to three weeks. So, I'm not too far off that. So, hopefully it won't be too much longer. Is everyone this Wednesday? What's everyone been up to? Any nice plans for this evening? What's happening? Right, so what? Oh, oh, really? This seems like a really backwards way of doing things, but I feel like this is going to make the least amount of mess. I may be wrong, but. That looks like a cup, I would say. And then we want a cup of the cornmeal. I hope this is a good cornmeal. I actually got it off Amazon and there were so many different kinds. I get no idea. <laughs> I don't know which one I want. Um, and I think this, I just took this one because it, it was going to arrive quickest. I think that was the only reason I went for this one. But I am intrigued. And I really don't think I have had this anywhere. I've been to America a couple of times, but I don't remember ever having cornbread. So I'm intrigued. Plus, I'm thinking I might 
try and make homemade tacos. I've got it on my um, my Discord as my meal for Sunday. Um, so that could be interesting. I don't. I'm assuming that you use cornmeal for tacos. I've never. I've not actually looked, but. <laughs> Hello, Casey. <laughs> Cornmeal is my favourite meal of the day. I played a dragon. Wait, huh? <laughs> when did he use? When did he play a dragon? What? What? What James Bond movie was that? <laughs> the jalapeno. Oh, nice. I did see a recipe for. Um, was it? It might have been jalapeno and cheddar. I thought that sounds really nice. I unfortunately don't have any jalapenos at the moment. I'm gonna get some for the tacos, but I don't have any for today, so that's sad. Um, I put, oh, I've done that one. <laughs> it's actually, oh. Is that quite different then, Cosmic Cat? Will I be able to make tacos with cornmeal? Will they go horribly wrong? I mean, it's quite, um, stone ground. It is quite ground. I mean, it's not quite as fine as flour. Shunkering for Draco. Oh, I've not seen Draco. That would be why. And it's Draco or Dragon. Did not realise that at all. <laughs> but you learn every you learn something new every day. Oh, thank you, Casey. Well, I hope you have a good stream. I was hoping that we could raid you yesterday, but I think you appeared on maybe like three hours later after I finished. <laughs> so that was sad, but... I'll come say hi later if you're still on. Uh, cornflakes is much fun. I mean, it it doesn't look. It looks kind of fine. Can you see that? Oh, mm. I mean, it, uh, it's maybe a bit. It's maybe a bit coarse. I might just try it anyway. <laughs> See what happens because the problem is I'm probably not going to be able to get like that kind of corn flour in time now. I can have a look, I might, I might just give it a go with this and see what happens. Good to see you too, it's always a pleasure, Casey. Yep, I'm a bit actually. This is a fun song, I like, I'm enjoying that. Can you see that? So it's, I mean, it, it's not quite flower consistency. Oh, it smells nice though. It's definitely a bit more kind of gritty. Enjoy your cleaning and enjoy your stream, Casey. Have a good one. And I'm, I, I'm sure I'll see you later. Looks like ground flour. Ah, is ground flour a little bit more coarse then, or is it like flour? Because I would say this is definitely more, kind of more bitty. But it might, it might work. Yeah, then with a different, ah, that's true. I could just hunt for a recipe with, that's a good idea. I might try that then. Because I feel like they could, it could be quite nice and kind of crispy. Kind of, um, so I feel like when you get, sometimes when you get sort of corn tacos, they are quite, like, not bitty, because that sounds a bit strange. Interesting, we'll see. I think I might just give it a go and see what happens. And I can always like buy some backups just in case it goes horribly wrong. <laughs> right, what else did we want in here? And a tablespoon of baking powder. Just the colour. Yeah, it does actually, doesn't it? No, but it's, I've just, I just checked um, after you said that it's definitely corn flour because I would make myself very ill if it was ground flour. <laughs> oh, no problem, Cosmic Cat. It was good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. 
and hopefully see you again soon. Just shy says a wee bit of plastic in there, which is ideal. It's how satisfying is it sieving things? <laughs> and I, I think I'm gonna add a tiny bit of xanthan gum, which is, um, I've still actually to figure out what it is exactly, but basically it's used in a lot of gluten-free cooking, a lot of gluten-free baking, sorry, because it kind of replicates that kind of stickiness of gluten. So it's quite handy just to, to put some in to make sure that your, kind of, your loaf's gonna stick, stick together as well as possible. A tablespoon of baking powder, that seems like a lot. Okay, we'll go with it. She knows better than I do. Um, salt. Ah, uh, where are we? Half a, half a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna put in, I think half a teaspoon of then some gum. Thank you, Dana Doll. Cheers. <laughs> um, what did I say? Salt. Salt, salt, salt. And it was half a teaspoon. Okay. And then what else did we have? The rest is all wet ingredients. Oh, nice. Oh, of course, we have a baker. That's handy. So what is it actually made of? Is it just chemicals? <laughs> is there anything natural in it? An effective thickening agent. I just found that recently actually because I always have some because it's good for gluten-free baking um, but I never realized that I mean it makes sense that you can use it for thickening stuff but I would always tend to use just like flour or corn flour so it's quite interesting to learn that so I have done that a bit more recently and it does seem to work quite well I don't need that now. So, the girl who bakes, do you also bake gluten-free things or do you only bake regular things? If you do bake gluten-free, do you find it quite tricky? Or are you pretty good at it now if you've had loads of practice? Just Googled it. <laughs> Looks to be a chemical. Yeah, because we had a bit of a chat about that recently and I wondered if it was maybe one of these things that it had come from a plant, but I kind of almost assumed be xanthan gum didn't sound very natural, so... But yeah, it obviously does seem to work quite well. Right, so that's our dry ingredients. That's nice and mixed together. Bake gluten-free cakes and cupcakes, nice. Yeah, I mean, it's one of these things, unless you have to, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I mean, obviously for people who have to eat gluten-free like myself, um, it's, it's amazing when people do go to the effort to bake gluten free but I mean I bake I mean I don't bake a lot but obviously when I do bake I bake gluten free so I would I would have said well I'm fairly experienced in it and I still get it wrong a lot so it's one of these things that I I would never say to like I would never expect somebody to do gluten free baking for me because it's it is really tricky <laughs> it's a bit more like like baking is already a science 
and then gluten free takes all those science rules and just like stomps on them <laughs> and makes up its own rules. So yeah, it's, it can be a challenge and it can be very rewarding when it works, but if it doesn't work it's quite frustrating. Um, and then we've got, right, one cup of half and half. So half and half. What exactly is half and half? <laughs> is that like half milk, half cream? Is that what that is in theory? Yeah. Sarah, how are you today? Happy Wednesday, I hope you're well. No. Okay. Okay, so was that, yeah, Girl Who Bakes, is that for half and half? If you ever need a helper, Thank you very much, Sarah, for the work. I hope you're doing all right. Um, yes, half and half. Do we think, because we don't get half and half here, can I just put in half milk and half cream? Would that work? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> half and half. Yeah, I think it's like, because I think it is some kind of a, like a milk cream thing, but I think you guys in the US, because I think you can just buy it in like a bottle of half and half. Okay, half milk and half cream. We'll just give it a go. <laughs> That's it, it's all about discovering new things, a bit of experimentation. Okay. That's maybe a bit more than half, but just means it'll be more creamy. I always find it really interesting when you see like what different products are available in different places. I almost quite enjoy finding recipes from different places and then being like, right, what does that mean? What does that mean? What can I use instead of that because I can't get that here? Right, oh. Nope. Half and half is a silly product. Yeah, I don't, I mean, what? Do you use it a lot for baking? Is it like a baking ingredient or? Surely you don't put it on your cereal or anything. Or do you? No half and half, no. No, it's, I don't think it's a, a thing in the UK at all. Cause we get, so we get like different levels of milk. So we've got like, um, skimmed, semi-skimmed, whole milk, and then single cream, double cream, heavy whipping cream. See, that would be like our thickest kind of cream. And that would, I think that's just double cream. Or is double cream whipping cream separate? I think it's just double cream and then you can whip it. Most people put it in their coffee. Ah. Okay, so it's like not quite as bad as just putting cream in your coffee, but it tastes nicer than just putting milk. <laughs> I suppose that makes sense. Each to their own. So we've put in about half and half milk and cream. And we'll see if it works. Still get a wee bit in there. Still a wee bit in there, so we'll just get the rest out. I think I've actually, I should have done the eggs first. That was silly. Whoops, let me check. Check. Two beaten eggs. Oh, okay, that's fine. I can just. Right. Two beaten eggs. Get a wee bowl out for that. I'm intrigued. I'm excited to see if this works quite well, gluten free. 
I've got a feeling this could be something that I do enjoy. Oh, is it? Right. So is whipping cream thicker again than double cream? <laughs> Can you tell I don't use a lot of cream? I tend to use, I'll use like single cream in sauces and things. But I'm not, it's funny, I'm not a huge dessert fan. Oh. So I think that's why my knowledge is slightly lacking. But it's always good to learn. I think my favourite anyway is sour cream. <laughs> Which is probably a whole other ball game. and then we're going to add some melted butter and then that's all of our wet ingredients. I could, if I wanted at this stage, add the, the sweet ingredients. I think I've decided against it. Ah, whipping cream is a bit lighter than double. That's funny because I would have thought that it was, I would just thought that it would have been like heavier, but that's handy to know, so it's like single whipping double, is there anything else in, in there? <laughs> and then clotted, ooh, <gasps> if only I had some, but I bet that would be nice, because a lot of the recipes I found were with buttermilk, instead, I think instead of the half and half. But buttermilk can be quite difficult for us to get. I don't know why, because it is quite a common thing and you do see it in a lot of recipes. So I'm not sure why, but it's, it can be quite difficult to get. So I thought I'll just, before I even try and hunt for it, I'll just find a recipe that uses something else. Next time, yes. Well, if this is a success and I enjoy it, I'll definitely try it again and I'll use, I'll use sour cream. And then how much butter? A quarter of a cup of butter. Um, I think I, think I might actually have. Although how, a third of a cup. That's not right, what's that? Ah, oh, that's got a quarter on it, that's good. Yes, I like buttermilk and baked good as, goods as well. I'm trying to think, I used to make, cause that's what it was, I used to make a soda bread, which I've tried it with gluten-free flour. It doesn't work nearly as well, but there's a really good, is it, it's Paul Hollywood, I think it is. Um, he does a really, really nice, really easy soda bread. And I like a soda bread because you don't have to prove it. So you just kind of put it together, mix it all together, put it in a dod on a baking tray and put it in the oven. And it used buttermilk. So anytime I found buttermilk, I would grab some to make this bread. And I think, is it fried chicken? And that kind of thing that you, you quite often have in buttermilk. But yeah, it's really difficult to get here. And one of the, the main places you find it is if you've got like a Polish section in the supermarket, that's probably where you're most likely to find it here, which is a bit, I don't really understand why, but at least you can get it sometimes, just not very often. So I try and kind of stock up and then do a load of buttermilk recipes all at one time. <laughs> right, this is gonna be a bit random. Buttermilk fried chicken, yes. Although it's been a long time since I've had fried chicken. Right, I, should I eyeball this or should I try and work it out? Should I... Right, 
right, so 62.5 millilitres of melted butter. How exactly are you supposed to figure that out? Um, oh, and that's sad. I really like when they put the, you know, they put the little marks on like the butter to show you what bits, I think it splits up into like 50 grams, but they've not got it on this one. So I want 62 and a half millilitres. I'm just gonna say that much. You need Alexa. I have one, I do have it in the living room. <laughs> Hold on, I'll go and ask her. <laughs> but then the prop, right, so this is what gets me with these recipes. So they say you want two, so 62.5 millilitres of melted butter. But can you work that out from solid butter? Or is it going to be different? Because surely they should tell you how much butter you need before you melt it so you can weigh it and then melt it. Alexa, scary. <laughs> I'm going to ask her. I ask her for measurements all the time. <laughs> Alexa, how much is 62.5 millilitres in grams? See, that's not helpful at all. <laughs> Apparently, according to Alexa, grams cannot be measured in millilitres. So, <laughs> that's not helped us at all. So thank you for that, Alexa. I think it would be the same. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna weigh it and see what the, the scales say and if I'm wildly off. Five grams. How good was that for a bit of eyeballing? I'm just gonna go with that because I always find, especially if you melt butter, you always get some stuck to the bowl, so you're always a couple of grams out. Does she speak Scottish? She does, but I have to put on my posh voice when I talk to her, <laughs> otherwise, she won't understand me. I have to speak like this Alexa, please answer my question. <laughs> Otherwise, I've got no chance. That's the the joys of having a Scottish accent. We don't get understood by machines. Which is maybe not always a bad thing. <laughs> right, I'm in my cupboard just melting my butter quickly. Kenny Onions, hello, how are you? IPS Summers Unite, yay! <laughs> we need like a little clubhouse or something. It will be different. Something can be done certain to take up the same volume. That, see that's, that's roughly, <laughs> roughly what I was thinking. <laughs> Maybe slightly less scientific, but how are you, Canty Onions? Are you having a good Wednesday so far? Um, hopefully it won't be too different. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we shall see. Uh, I'm good, thank you. Um, what beans am I using? Right, so that's a good question. So obviously with IBS beans are quite often known as being the devil. I'm okay with beans. I am not good with chickpeas. I can't go near chickpeas. For some reason it's only chickpeas. Everything else is okay. I'll probably have quite a small portion of this tonight, just to be sure. <laughs> but I'm gonna use so I find butter beans are probably one of the best beans for me. I don't seem to have any rhyme or reason as to why I can eat some beans and why I can't, but that seems to be a common theme with IBS. So I've just kind of tried all of them and seen which affect me the least and which I'm okay to eat, which I shouldn't eat. So the ones that I'm okay with are 
Butter beans in particular. So I make hummus with butter beans and I think it's actually nicer than with chickpeas. And then I'm gonna use red kidney beans because I'm okay with them. And some cannellini beans. And I'm gonna add some sweet corn. But probably, I mean, if you were, obviously if you're not good with any beans, then that's not ideal. But I was almost tempted to do this just with butter beans and just do like chunks of tomato, chunks of pepper, maybe some sweet corn, because I'm okay with sweet corn as well. But yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll probably have a, a smallish portion of it. Um, and I've just used beans that I know I'm, I'm okay with. Obviously, the more you have, the more likely you are to to not be quite as okay <laughs> but as long as there's no chickpeas in there because chickpeas are the devil which is so funny when it and it, I think that's one thing that really frustrates me because being gluten-free as well a lot of things are if you get a lot of gluten-free things they make it with chickpea flour well they do here anyway so not only do I have to check that if something's gluten-free but that it's also chickpea free <laughs> So that, so yeah, if you're the same canny onions, it can be a bit of a nightmare. Lucky to be okay with sweet corn, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I could eat like a whole uh, cob. I think that might, plus with braces, that wouldn't work anyway. <laughs> but yeah, um, to be fair, I'm quite lucky with what I can and can't eat. Um, and as I said, I'll just have a, I won't go mad with the portion size. Um, and I should be okay. But I find butter beans, they're my kind of go-to when it comes to beans because they're the ones I'm best with. But yeah, that's such a bummer because I, I love beans and I used to love chickpeas and like chickpea stew and hummus. But at least I suppose I'm lucky that I can just substitute it for other beans. How are you canning onions with like lentils and pulses? And, um, what other things? Lentils mainly. Are you okay with lentils or can you not have lentils either? Thank you, Jennifer. Cheers. And I think as well sometimes I'll kind of think, oh, I just really fancy something like that. And I'll, I mean, I would, I would never eat something with chickpeas in it. I just don't do that now because I know that I'm gonna, it's going to make me ill. But if I know that it's something that I'm normally okay with, I'll think if I really, really fancy, I'll have a small portion because I feel that life's too short sometimes. <laughs> if I know I'm not gonna be a lot of pain, then I'll have a wee bit. And then often that kind of curbs my craving and then I'm like, right, no, I'm good. I don't need any, I don't need any more of that for a while. Um, melted butter. So I just put, yeah, so that all just goes in together and then I mix it with the dry ingredients. Oh, aww. I splashed. So do you can't eat onions, are you still on like a full low FODMAP diet? Or are there things that you've been able to kind of reintroduce again? And if anyone is in the chat and doesn't know, um, a low FODMAP diet is basically, it's a diet that's recommended for IBS sufferers. And it's an elimination diet. So it's not like, it's not meant to be a lifelong thing. But it's basically to, so you start by taking out all of these different carbohydrates that can pro cause stomach problems in people with IBS. Um, and then you slowly reintroduce them back into your diet to figure out exactly what your own personal trigger foods are. Because obviously everyone is so different. Um, and I can't, I mean, they say that it doesn't work for everybody, but it worked, it's, it's done miracles for me. And then I think I just add this in, don't I? That looks, I mean, that looks awful. It looks like it's all separated. Can you see that? But I think it's too bright. But that's what it looks like in the picture. So 
we're gonna go with it. Oh, hold on, hold on. I get my wee bit. So I'm supposed to. Is that gonna be too wee? It might be actually. Maybe do it in the other one. So they say that as soon as I've got the batter ready, wait, that's the other one. <laughs> as soon as I've got the batter ready, then I need to put it straight in the oven. Huh? I've lost a dish. Where's my dish going? I don't understand. Someone's stolen my dish. <laughs> done with my dish. Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> I had the leftover sticky toffee pudding and I took it to my mum and dad's. So that's where my dish is. Um, oh right, hold on. Let me think now. <laughs> that's thrown me off a wee bit. Hide and seek. I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> So I'm going to do that, I'm going to prepare this first because they say that as soon as that's ready, it needs to go in the oven. Although, do you know what? No, I'm going to mix them because that looks, that looks rotten. It's so weird, I think it's because the butter is kind of starting to cool down again. So it's almost like kind of splitting. Magic Cookie, how are you today? Well, so far so good, but I've not actually cooked anything yet, so <laughs> there's still time for it all to go wrong. I am making, well, I'm preparing a cornbread for the first time ever. Um, so yeah, it could be interesting. My family cornbread before. Uh, no, I don't think, not that I'm aware of. I would be very surprised if they had because it's not something that we really get here. And I don't, I mean, no, I can't, I don't think they will have done. So, I mean, I suppose that's a good thing that if it does go wrong, it, it might not be obvious because <laughs> I don't know what it's meant to be like. So, <laughs> cornbread is tasty. Oh, I hope so. It always looks really nice when you see it, like when you see pictures and stuff of it. No, I've never made it and I've never had it before. <laughs> I've only ever seen it, um, like in pictures and stuff. So I know that it exists and I know that it looks nice, but I have never tried it or made it. But I've seen that it's supposed to go well with chili and I love chili. So I thought, let's give it a bash. Plus I thought it might be quite good for gluten free because obviously a lot of the flour is like the cornmeal rather than a lot of flour. I'm in for a treat. Oh, that sounds good. So you're a fan, real cookie, real magic cookie. You're a fan of cornbread. And would you have it with, would you have it with chili? And the discussion we had at the beginning was a lot of the recipes make it sweet so they add like honey or sugar. I find that sounds a bit strange because I just don't think sweet things go with like savoury mains. So I'm going to do a savoury one because I think that I'll prefer that. If I like it, I'll maybe try a sweet one. Chili and over. Ooh. Yeah, see, maybe like pulled pork or something might be quite nice as well. I'm losing the plot today. I'm looking for my butter and it's right beside me. So that. Right, so we've got people in here who know what they're doing. I would say that looks pretty good. It's quite thick. I think that. Ooh. Ham and bean soup. That sounds nice as well. So it's quite thick. Looks right, good. That's that's good to hear. And it says a nine by nine tray, so that's not nine by nine, I wouldn't have thought. 
and I think my measuring tape is upstairs. So what I'm going to do is, because I don't want it to be too, I don't want it to be too flat. Um, so I'm going to do a bit of arts and crafts in here. I really need to just treat myself to not too thin. That's what I'm thinking. And I don't want it to bake too thin. So what I'm going to do is, because this is like a, a long rectangular one, I could show you it better here, to be fair. Um, I'm going to make it into like more of a square and create like a wall. I'm trying to do this away from the microphone. That's quite loud though, sorry. I've done this before when I've made brownies. Party Squid! How are you? Did you have a good chill out? Are you rested? Are you feeling good again? I do hope so. so <laughs> it's a very makeshift wall. <laughs> but it's... I hope nobody's wearing headphones. So I have done this for brownies before and it did work quite well. I think it'll actually work better with this because the mixture is quite thick. <laughs> I mean, it's so professional over here. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. And once I've done this, party squads, I'll show you my avocado plant before I forget. Must give it a try. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, I'm intrigued. I am very intrigued. Um, this is where it always gets stuck. Because it's all just a wee bit complicated. It's a bit, it's a bit too much like maths, this part. Party squads, have you ever had cornbread? Because I think, I don't think it's a very popular, like a very common European thing at all. So I'd be surprised if you did, but maybe if you've been to America, you may have. <laughs> I know I had thought about that, but then because I've got this, like this tin foil, I wasn't sure how that would work, so I think I kind of need to have it in this little case thing. Plus, it makes it easier to pull it out. I mean, to be fair, I will just get myself eventually a smaller tin, <laughs> and then I won't have to do this each time. I don't want it kind of running all over the place. Okay. And then I just need like another pair of hands to hold this down for me. <laughs> so if anyone, ooh, um, I'll get a big spoon. Sometimes, some of the best ways are the most random, so, and they might work better for some people, so it's always good just to throw it out there. You never know, you might help someone. <laughs> I know, I should, have, I should have put this in arts and crafts. Was it crafting? sure because the recipe says once it's mixed to put it immediately into the oven 
and I'm pretty sure it immediately was in capital letters. But <laughs> I obviously haven't done it that quickly and I'm not quite sure what the rush is, but there was also something about you shouldn't mix it too much because of the gluten. But then obviously because I've got gluten-free flour, that's not going to be a problem. But I tried not to mix it too much anyway. Just kind of make sure that it all comes together. Okay. And we'll just kind of squish it into the edges. This looks quite good. I'm excited now. And then I'll just chop down the sides a little bit more, mainly just for aesthetic reasons. I'm excited, this looks nice. I've dipped this little edge in it a bit, but... Yay! Gastro Fresco! How are you? I think I've, yeah, I think everyone came over here. Party squad, so I appreciate that very much. <laughs> so for anyone who's just arrived, we are making a veggie bean chili and a gluten-free cornbread. And as I've said, I have never eaten cornbread and I've never made cornbread before so I have no idea what to expect I don't know if I'm doing it right yeah <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm doing it right but it looks pretty good I would say I'm quite happy with that we've got a couple of people in the chat who know what cornbread should be like and what it should taste like so I'm hoping that we'll be able to, it'll be a bit of teamwork and that I'm, I'm sort of being guided through it, which is always nice. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And I had to do a bit of a makeshift pot pan for it because my pan is far, or my dish tray is far too big. And it wanted a, a square one and I didn't want it to be too thin. So, oh, thank you very much, Gastro Pasco, for all the bits. Oh, oh, why does that not? Oh, I thought I'd change that. Thank you very much. So that is much appreciated. So do you know about cornbread as well? So does this look right? <laughs> does that, I mean, I would say that looks pretty good. And would you have your cornbread slightly sweet or not when you're having it with chilli? I have gone for not because it sounds a bit strange to me. <laughs> yes, yes, good. That makes me very happy. Right, I'm going to pop this in the oven now. I don't know how long did they say. Um, 25 to 50 minutes. And then cool. Okay. Okay. 25 to 30 minutes. Twenty-five. We'll start with twenty-five and then I can check it because my, my oven is a bit wonky. I I entirely agree with you, Gas. Gastro Pasco, that's quite hard to say. <laughs> because that was my issue as well, because I thought, I, I mean, you quite often get like kind of sweet sides with things, but I have never been a fan of that. I don't, I feel like if you're having a main course, then it should be savory. 
I'm trying to think if there's any main course that I would eat that's sweet. But no, because that's a dessert, that's not a main course. <laughs> so yeah, so this recipe was, I think it was meant to be sweet. But it said if you want to make it sweet, add either honey or sugar or both. And I thought, nah. So I didn't bother. Um, and we've had to recreate half and half and all sorts, but we're, it's in the oven. <laughs> so I'm excited to see how it comes, how it comes out. Come with Matt. See, I quite enjoy trying to say Gastro Pasco. <laughs> I feel like I'll get it there. But if I get stuck, I'll just call you Matt then. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now that's in the oven, I can start on the chilli. Look at bowls everywhere already. So, for the chilli, we are going to use um, a lot of tins of things. <laughs> I might actually need, thank you very much, Mink. Cheers. It's as if you know, it's actually quite creepy. As soon as I kind of go, oh, I'm quite thirsty, I could go a drink. Someone goes, hydrate. <laughs> I love it, it's great. Mm. I meant to check out that one at the right temperature. Um, Where does it not say that? It's helpful. Oh, there it is. Uh, 200 Fahrenheit, which I, no, 400 Fahrenheit, which I think is about 200? 204. But that'll be without um, a fan, so yeah, I think I'll be fine. This is already making me hungry. Well, I do hope so. That's the point. <laughs> I really like to load them up. I'm going to say sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what am I making this Friday? Eh. Is that really bad? I can't. I cannot remember. Because I'm trying to think if I've got a, a beer that matches what I'm making on Friday. Eh. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, bolognese. Yeah, you can have any beer with that. So yeah, I'll have a, I'll have a Friday beer again, maybe. <laughs> Although the problem is, if you keep making me hydrate, I maybe need to put the points on the hydrate up a bit because I'll end up drunk before I actually finish my dinner. <laughs> right, so for the chili, I'm gonna use a, a range of tins. So I suppose this is quite a good recipe because you don't really need any fresh ingredients. <laughs> you can pretty much do it all from tins, apart from maybe like an onion and some garlic. So we're going to use, the beans we're going to use are cannellini, red kidney and butter beans. And then I'm also going to add some sweet corn and probably two tins of chopped tomatoes because I don't think one's going to be enough. And then onion, garlic, maybe some stock and then a load of herbs and spices to make it taste nice. So I'm going to grab a pot and try and decide what size of pot I'm going to need. Probably a large one. We'll maybe just go for the large one and then... Yeah, the wee one's going to be too small. And then... My pot's all scratched. Is that good on that one? Can you see the armor better on this one? Yeah, do it on that one. So I'm gonna start by chopping an onion and some garlic. <laughs> and I've got an audience. My cat thinks it's six o'clock already and he's getting his dinner, but he's far too early. So he's just going to sit and stare at me until he gets bored and goes back outside again. <laughs> this is a, a daily ritual. 
<laughs> Although, yeah, the, the Cobra beer, the Indian beer that I had on Friday, I actually really enjoyed. It was good. The only problem was I then had, because we had we had that garden party, or well, not really a party, a, a social social distanced get together, um, in the garden in the rain. I then had a few drinks more, so it became a bit dangerous. <laughs> I see you. Is it? Like this is this is what I have to deal with. You see him? <laughs> Actually, just lies down beside me. He's a nutcase. And now I have to try and not stand on him. <laughs> he doesn't like the camera, though. Anytime I put it down towards him, he's like, What is that? Get that away from me. Oh, a hard garlic clove. So I'm going to use two garlic cloves, I think, today. Because we want lots of flavour. Oh, a cutie. He is. He's very cute. But he is also, I think he is also trying to to make me fall over. He's trying to sabotage me. <laughs> I think that's when I finally get my emotes approved. I think I'm going to do a little cat one. Because I am very much a, cat, a crazy cat lady. Oh, yeah. He's so cute, but he's, he's, he is, he's sabotaging me. <laughs> Hello, how do you think? <laughs> how are you today? How do you think? If you've got IBS, you don't know any other kind of day. <laughs> All about the pets, yeah. How are you? How your ethic? Hopefully not gassy. <laughs> and it's small portions. <laughs> oh, this is going to be one of these ones that's really awkward to peel. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear it. That is always a good start. Just on your work break, nice. And how is work today? Are you having a good shift so far? So I'm just gonna kind of finely chop these up. And these will go in our pot with some oil and garlic. And then we're just gonna slowly add everything else and let it kind of cook off. Hopefully the, the cornbread will even out the gas, maybe. Or sorry, pure baby system and chill. Well, that's good. Do I actually know what it is you do? Because, I mean, that seems quite specific. I'm assuming at school. And I'm sorry if you have told me already, my memory is horrific. So that's quite a lot of onion actually, but. Yeah, I think I'll just do that just now and the other one I can put in the fridge because that's quite a lot. And then I'll pop this on. So I'll switch it over and I'll grab my garlic press. Ooh, we're getting a bit of color and a bit of height on the cornbread, so that's exciting. Ah, a professional babysitter, nice. Or a nanny, or a Nico nurse. That's a lot of talents. <laughs> that's good though, at least it's a bit quieter than today. 
I love my simple corn. That's, that's hilarious because, right, so I have never made or tried cornbread before, but I love chili and I know that it's a southern, normally, thing that you would have with chili. So I really wanted to try making some. And I thought it'd be a good option for gluten-free because a lot of it is obviously the cornmeal. So I'm excited, I'm excited to try it. And the, the question that everybody wants me to ask, <laughs> or just me, because I'm interested, um, would you have yours slightly sweet or would you have it savory? Oh, thank you very much, Mary Fisher. That is much appreciated. Thank you for the subscription. And welcome to the Confetti Clan. <laughs> hydrate, hydrate. Thank you, girl who bakes. Oh, yeah, I needed that again. <laughs> I'm going to grab my spoon. Ah, okay. Yeah, we'd said that. I would have just thought that like the chili was the kind of the normal thing to have with it. But that's interesting. Fried chicken as well. Hmm. And would you have it like would you have the the cornbread slightly sweet? Or would it be completely savoury? Because this recipe says that you can add honey or sugar. But that sounded weird to me, so I didn't. <laughs> Those are some strong onions. And then I want some tomato paste. So now I need to decide. I'm going to open the window because it's quite steamy already. Depends who makes it. Hmm. Okay. So. See, I've said before, because that does seem to be quite a common thing to do with cornbread, but I can eat most things, I cannot eat honey, I just can't, I just, I don't like it, it doesn't agree with me, it gives me goosebumps when I think about it, um, so, you do you. <laughs> I would maybe have tried a little bit of maple syrup, but, um, I, I just, I can't get on board with the honey. There's just a weird taste to it that it, I don't like it. Oh, thank you very much, Mary Fisher. And you will have to let me know if you ever try any of them. Because that would interest me. So I put up, it took me a long time. <laughs> but I finally put up the recipe for my, well that made a mess. Um, my fake KFC chicken bucket. So if you're on the Discord, um, it's on there, or if I'm just really quick, I could stick it in here, because it did, it did take me quite a long time to put it all together, um, but I did think it was worth it because it's, in my opinion, <laughs> a very good recipe. <laughs> So it's a, it's a vegan variety bucket. Let's put it on there so you can have a wee nosy. So that's, I mean, a lot of the other ones I already had on the website, but that was one I didn't. So I wrote that all up and it's there now. And if any, same to anyone, if anyone ever tries any of my recipes, please do let me know or send me a picture on Discord or Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, <laughs> whatever you like. <laughs> the variety bucket was genius. Thank you very much. It was good fun. I actually really, really enjoyed. I really enjoyed it, like making it and kind of coming up with it. And it was really tasty. Oh, no worries, Hodgerific. Thank you very much for being here. And I hope you have a good rest of shift and a good day. Maybe see you later on. We've lost all heat to the past. <laughs> it's just stopped cooking. 
So I'm gonna rip it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna add tomato puree. I, so as far as I was always aware, <laughs> you should add tomato puree quite near the beginning like when you're doing your onions and garlic because you want to like almost cook it off a little bit to get rid of like the harsh taste but then the problem with that is I've found that if you do it too if it's too early and too hot you actually burn the puree and then it tastes horrible so I I don't add it too early and I think with something like this you're going to be cooking it for a, a bit of time anyway so the bitter taste is probably going to come off it then anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy McKellen Cornbread Sin. I'm glad I can inspire you. <laughs> but... <coughs> oh, I don't know if that's... I think that's the onion. So onions don't make me cry because I've got contact lenses in, but apparently they make me sneeze. <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking, because I feel like also chili is very much one that I just kind of, it's a bit random and I just can add bits and pieces to it depending on what I fancy. Do I want to add wine? I think wine might be a bit weird. Wine's good for like spaghetti bolognese and things like that. But I feel like it might be a bit odd in, in this. So I think I'm not going to bother. Um, what do I want? Chilli powder, paprika. Oh, you've got everything ready to go. Nice. That's always good. Especially if you get a proper craving for something and you're like, oh, I don't want to have to go to the shops and buy all of this stuff. If you already have it, you just like, oh, I'll just make it now. Ideal. So I'm going to add about a teaspoon and a half of smoked paprika because I like it quite smoky. Oh my God. Not that much chilli powder because that will murder me. So I'm going to take some of that out. <laughs> I was thinking that was a little, like, scatter one and not just a pour. <laughs> oh, it smells so strong of chilli now. I need to get some of this off because that, that will not agree with me. Yeah, I think that's okay now. <laughs> Oops. Hydrate. Thank you. I need to top up. I'll go and do that. Cheers. Thank you, Dana Doll. Your chicken chili that sounded really really nice and that was the one with like the creamy sauce wasn't it because that sounded delicious if you have a recipe for that please do let me know because I would be interested to try that one as well because I do like a creamy sauce ah, of course you could use cornbread with it as well right, I think I'm gonna add the tomato puree now and then with the spices, I just kind of put a bit in to start with and then I'll keep tasting it until I get it to the way I want it. So you can see it's all kind of sticking to the bottom. So I think now I'm going to add my tin of tomatoes. And almost immediately after I get the tin opener out, I will get another cat come to say hello because she thinks that as soon as I get the tin opener out and I'm opening up a tin of tuna that's for her 
but it's not. <laughs> I'm going to add the tomatoes and get that to kind of loosen off all the bits at the bottom. Oh, even the smell of that already. So you can see that kind of cleans off all of the, the burnt stuff that they've not burnt. Roasted. The roasted bits at the bottom. So that's good now. <laughs> Can opener equals universal cat cough. That is so true. So true. And they know they can it's almost like they can they can feel it coming. Right, what else do I want in here? I definitely need some water. I think what I'll do is using my can. Billy Sausage! What a good name! <laughs> My gosh, rumbling just looking at that. Oh dear. Oh, that's lovely. Well, this stuff should be nicer than that. Right, so then to that, I've added a can of water and I'm going to add a can of, I think I'll add the beans now and just kind of let them all, let them all cook off. Well, that is a shame. Anywho, so I will continue. Um, so we've got our spices in. I don't think I'm going to add stock just yet. I think I'll wait and see how it looks and I'll maybe add stock at the end. So I'll grab my sieve and I'll just start sieving all the beans. Although. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, <laughs> I'm trying to decide, I think I might be better leaving the sauce to cook for a bit um, and then adding the beans because obviously the beans will go, I think the beans will maybe go a bit soft if they're left in the sauce for too long. In theory, that sounds right, but I'm wondering if I should just add it all. I think I'll cheese my chopper <laughs> That's that seems very specific, previous mink. Is that a thing that dogs like cheese slices? It's funny, it's not something we ever really have in the house because I much prefer like actual chunks of cheddar. But I had, I'd never thought that that would be a good way to get a dog to come to you. But then I feel like dogs as soon as you're there, they'll just be like, yay, hello! <laughs> right. Oh! Oh! Okay, that's much more exciting. Let's let's deal with this first. The oven is beeping. So let me see how <gasps> it looks good! And it's roasting. Oh my goodness! Right, let's, let's check it. I'm gonna prod it first. Can you see that? Ooh. 
So I'm going to prod it with a little stick. And then... I think that's done. Hey, Purple Carpet! Purple Carpet, you're finished already. I am gutted. I really wanted to see the end of your breakfast. Thank you very much for the raid. How did your breakfast go? How did your square sausages turn out? Because they looked amazing. And I'm sorry I didn't say goodbye, but I realised um, at about, I think it's about quarter past three when I was to start at four that I didn't have half of the ingredients that I needed to make what I was going to make today. <laughs> so I had to run to the shop and run back to be on time. <laughs> Raid Raid! Hello Eaterin! How are you today? Hello Koru! Nice to see you! Hi Luko! How are we all doing? Did you all enjoy Purple Coffin's stream? Sausages were smidge overcooked. But I think that's okay for the square sausages. I think they're allowed to be a bit overcooked. I don't, to be fair, I don't think I've ever had one that's been on, on, on poids. <laughs> looks yummy. Thank you, Stephen Foster. <laughs> it looked amazing and made me hungry. Purple Coffins is good at that. She always makes me hungry. Oh, actually, I have a new thing. Let me do it. Let me do this. Let me do this. Yay, that worked. <laughs> I've never had cornbread, me neither. I've never had it. I've never made it. Um, but I wanted to make chilli and I saw that that was a thing so I thought I'm just gonna give it a go and see how it works and this is it so before I touch it again with my bare hands ah, so do I look cool. I fully agree it's just such a chill stream so if you're not if you're here and you're not following purple coffins yet Please go and do that <laughs> and then come back. <laughs> You're very welcome. I set that up recently and that's the first one I've done. So, <laughs> so this is our cornbread. It looks, the colour, I'm going to do it this way. Because that, the colour looks nicer. Thank you very much, Purple Coffin. Cornbread is amazing when done right. I'm quite pleased with this. Thank you. I mean, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be like, so I'm, it's, we're kind of winging it a little bit, but... And it said it might have needed another five minutes, but I don't think it does. I think it's a bit thinner than some of them, maybe. Wrong place, apron. What apron? This apron? <laughs> colour looks so good. I'm very pleased with it, I'm not going to lie. Looks golden brown. Right, I feel like I should have researched this more because that's a few people have said about this honey butter now. I can't eat honey. I feel like maple syrup butter, if that was a thing. But I've made this one savoury because I feel like that that makes more sense to me. So I've made a savoury one to go with our veggie chilli. That looks like a good colour. This is what I was hoping for. So I'm quite pleased. Ah, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. See, I, for my first few streams, I didn't have an apron and I made a bit of a mess and a few people yelled at me. <laughs> but I've got one now and I do normally remember to put it on just because I know how messy I am, so I know that I need it. Butter is good enough. See, smelling it now, I can imagine just some melted butter on the top, that'd be really nice. Or dip, mm, yum, or just dipping it in the chilli. It's not sweet, dip, right, that's that's good to know. So I'll definitely put a little bit of butter on it. I can put my oven off now. Messes are still fun. Yeah, that, that's the problem, messes are fine at the time. And then you're like, oh, it's all right, that was a good stream. I've made something nice for dinner, let's go and eat dinner. 
And then after dinner, you think, I now have to stand in the kitchen for an hour and a half to clean the kitchen. <laughs> Ah, yeah, that's what I didn't win mine now as well. No problem at all. Thank you very much for the raid, Purple Coffins. And I hope you have a chilled evening now. And it's not going to take too long to clean up the mess. Did that get on the ceiling? Yeah. I don't think I've... <laughs> Jack. I don't think I've quite made it to the ceiling yet. But there's always a mess of some kind. <laughs> I see every day. That's the problem I feel as well because I don't like to, well, sometimes I have to, but you don't like to tidy up too much because it gets a bit boring. But eventually you're like, there's, I have no space to do anything anymore. <laughs> All of my, my counters are covered with something. Okay, so I'm pleased with the, the cornbread. So that's exciting. So I'm going to continue with the chilli itself. And I'll switch over to this one. So, so far we've just made a kind of tomato base, we've got onions, garlic, a tin of chopped tomatoes, a tin of water, too much chilli powder because I had a bit of an accident with it, <laughs> um, about a teaspoon and a half of smoked paprika and about a teaspoon of normal paprika. I'll just kind of adapt that depending on how I feel and, and I'll taste it and things and some tomato puree. So I think now, just because I'm impatient and I can't quite decide what to do next, I'm going to start putting in the beans. So we've got some red kidney beans, which I'll do first. And then we've got some butter beans, some cannellini beans, and some sweet corn. And I'm never sure if you're supposed to actually rinse the beans, but when you get them out of the can, the water that they're with always looks so weird. And I don't really like the look of it, so I just always kind of wash it, <laughs> wash them out. <laughs> no problem at all. Thank you very much for being here, Lady Liv. <laughs> Have a good day or evening or whatever it is where you are. And thank you very much for for popping in to say hello. Oh, right, so we've got our kidney beans. Could not remember the way they were called. And then I'll do the butter beans. So I think quite a common one to have with this would be chickpeas, but chickpeas and me do not work. So I avoid them at all costs. And I think butter beans taste nicer, so we're using butter beans. Plus it's, as we said before, was that today? Yeah, I think it was today. It's my kitchens with my rules. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to get a sign done with that, I think. And then I've got some cannellini beans. We've got a few that are stuck in the tin. I'm quite upset that I missed the end of Purple Coffin stream because that breakfast, oh, it looks so good. And being a fellow Scot, I do love a Scottish breakfast. So we've got three different kinds of beans and now I'm just going to put in some sweet corn. Although, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave the sweet corn for a bit because technically we don't really need to cook that. Okay, I'm going to taste it just to see if I've got the spices kind of right-ish. Mmm. Oh, I put so much jelly in. <laughs> oh, no. I knew that was going to happen. Because I opened the wrong side. 
and I opened the like the pour side instead of just the sprinkle side. That's got a kick to it. Um, it tastes nice though. So I think I'll turn the heat up on it and let it reduce a little bit. I think I might put in half a stock cube. See, this is kind of how I cook. <laughs> I just kind of, I, I don't, unless it's like baking or something, I don't really enjoy following recipes. Um, I'd much rather just play about with it and add bits and see what kind of works. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, salt, salt could be a disaster. I feel like that's quite a common thing to do though because it's so easily done. But like, if I'd done it with the paprika or the smoked paprika, I would have been okay with that because I really like the flavours of both of them. But it had to be the chilli powder, didn't it? <laughs> but it's all good, so I'm going to put a little bit more paprika in, and I think a little bit more smoked paprika. So I feel like it needs a little bit more depth to it. And then the opposite and do a little wing in it. I just find, I mean, it doesn't always work, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I have had some disasters, but I don't know, I just enjoy cooking more if I do it like that. And I just think if you just keep tasting it and adding bits, and it, it'll be nice eventually. But you glean the important notes from a recipe and a <laughs> kind of suggestion. Yeah, that's it. It's always a suggestion. It depends on what you like as well. I think cooking's quite a personal thing, so it obviously depends on your personal taste. And now I've got empty cans all over the place. So I'm just going to quickly get rid of some of these because I have stuff everywhere now. just remembered yeah maybe the chili beans yes do it you turn gotta love a good chili I'm so excited to try the cornbread with it I really am so I can put the chili powder away <laughs> I've definitely got enough of that I'm gonna put a little bit of salt in because it, it does need a bit of something And that's good fun. I've got something in on my contact lens. <laughs> right, hang on. I've just remembered I nearly forgot. Is Party Squad still here? Because I was showing off to him earlier about how I have managed to grow avocado plants from seed. And I told him I would show him them on the stream and then I completely forgot. <laughs> So if you are here, quite of buds and not lurking, let me know. Right, I have a question for the cornbread people. Should the top of the cornbread be crispy? Or is it all quite soft? That's my question for you. Crispy. Oh dear. <laughs> Bits of it are. Hmm. Crispy edges like a brownie. I mean. Oh, crap. Right, hold on. Maybe. Right, you can calm down a bit because you're going nuts. Right, let me see. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's have a wee... I mean, look at this. <laughs> Stuff all over the place now. Right, I'm going to have a quick...
just in case I need to put this back in for a couple of minutes. Just more brown. Because this seems like the good part. It's almost crispy. I don't even know what size you would... Ooh! <gasps> Can you see that? That looks pretty good. Oh, it smells nice as well. I'm going to try a wee bit. Mmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see what you mean though about it needs a butter. Oh, that's weird because you can taste like the little the little kind of gritty bits of corn. Oh, that's nice though. Where's my butter? And I can imagine that with jalapeno and cheddar. Yum. I'm loving the support. <laughs> corner piece is the best piece. That's what I thought. So, so I'm just going to steal a wee corner bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. That actually tastes... That tastes similar to another kind of bread that I've I've made, I've made before. It tastes a bit like a soda bread. I don't know why it would though, because it's quite, it's quite different. But that's delicious. So if that's what cornbread tastes like, then I like cornbread. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you all for your help with that. <laughs> That's really good. I could just have that for dinner. So if the chili doesn't turn out the way I want it, I'll just have cornbread for dinner. I'll be quite happy with that. Oh, that's so good. I might need to make another one. Mmm. That's not a chili turn. Fingers crossed. <laughs> It looks pretty good so far. It's starting to thicken up a little bit. I'm going to try it again, I think. Just to see. Oh, hot chilli with warm buttered cornbread. Oh. oh, that's much better. I still get a kick. <laughs> <laughs> still get a kick. <laughs> so I, get, I could have it, I just don't want it. But to be fair, I do think that would be quite nice with even like a little bit of syrup maybe? Or a bit of maple syrup. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you, Dinah Doll. I need that after the hot jelly. <laughs> No, it's nice, so it's not too hot. It's just got more of a kick than I would normally put in. Sweet butter, yeah. That makes sense. But yeah, I'm very much a savoury girl, so I'm quite happy with the just regular butter. I'll maybe try it with a sweet butter. But only a tiny corner. <laughs> so don't want to ruin it. Yeah, I'm going to have a wee quick tidy up. And then I can do... <laughs> no, that's the thing. I enjoy that. Because, I, because I've never had it before, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't really know how to serve it. I just knew that quite a lot of, like, well, Southern Americans would have it with um, 
they would have it with chili, so. <laughs> yes, exactly. Syrup and butter, that's what I was thinking, that might, that might be quite nice. I've just realised that my little thing of tomato puree is nearly finished, so I'm just going to empty it. And just let it cook off with the rest of it. Yeah, I might try and make a little sweet butter. Oh, oops. I might try that just in a minute then, actually. That'd be interesting. Yes, exactly. Now I know I like it, I'll definitely try it again. That's thickening up quite nicely. Yeah. Try and get some kind of order to my kitchen again. funny because I didn't expect so many people in the chat to have had cornbread before. But I suppose if it's quite a common American thing then it makes sense. Oh syrup and peanut butter. Now that sounds a bit strange. I do have both syrup and peanut butter. Would he also put it on cornbread? Because that does sound Unusual. Just get my little rubbish bag from my, my food waste. And then the last thing to make is the guacamole. Now I have two avocados in the fridge. I have the worst luck with avocados. I've just realised I'm hiding behind the menu the whole time. <laughs> ah, right, okay, just on regular bread. Yeah. I mean, syrup and peanut butter. I suppose it's not too far away from, like, chocolate and peanut butter. <laughs> it's that kind of, kind of sweet, salty thing, I suppose. So yeah, we'll give you that. Yeah, so with avocados, I have the worst luck with avocados. No matter when I buy them, where I buy them from, they always tend to be off. So I have two in the fridge. I am hopeful that they're gonna be okay, but I'm, ho I'm hoping I can at least get a little bit out of them that I can use. So we'll get some coriander as well. And I might even actually do some spring onions. So do I want spring onions or red onion? Seeing as though I don't have any red onion, we'll do spring onion. <laughs> Right, so the next thing is to see if I'm lucky with my avocados. Need a big, a big bowl. Okay. If we could cross our fingers for me, that would be fantastic. <laughs> I'm not hopeful. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but you never know. I might be surprised. Are we ready? Are we ready? <gasps> look! Yay! Yeah, look, I am very unlucky with avocados. And I've had these for a few days and they felt as though they might be too ripe that they might actually have gone bad already. Um, so far the first one seems good. Oh, excuse me. Uh, that one looks a bit funky. 
<gasps> Previous mink, I normally would. I don't have any lime. <laughs> I have lemon, so I'll use some lemon. Do I still have lemon? I've got lemon juice anyway. Um, but yeah, ideally, lime would be nicer. So if you've got lime, use lime. Right, and let's see what we can what we can scrape out of these. At least these ones look good. And again, this isn't going to be an authentic guacamole recipe, but this is just how I like to make it. Oh, thank you very much for your follow, The Practical Escapist. I feel like there's a story behind that name. That does sound quite interesting. <laughs> oh, look how good that avocado is. That was not what I was expecting. And a couple of wee bits that could maybe be slightly fresher. But I always find it's so hit or miss with an avocado. And then sometimes you buy them and they're so solid. Like quite often I'll get them and they'll be they'll actually be almost rubbery. And I don't know what that I don't I don't understand where that like why is that happens? <laughs> why is it rubbery? Nice to meet you too, practical escapist. How are you today? Have you had cornbread before? Are you a uh, a newbie to it like I am. They say avocados with a fat belly have a huge seeds. Ah, I didn't, I've never heard that before. So that's, that's good to know because obviously the seed takes up space from the avocado meat, I suppose. <laughs> so you want as small a seed as possible. Oh, right, and while we're on the topic of avocados, I don't know if Party Squad is still here. I think he might be lurking. Uh, so th that just me. So right. So I'm I'm never sure about how you're supposed to store avocados. So I tend to store them like just in my little basket until they start to go a little bit softer, and then I put them in the fridge because I think that's how they keep longest. But if anyone has any like full on proven tips. <laughs> Do let me know. And I, I don't know if he's here, but like, I'm going to show you guys anyway. So this was my lockdown project. Because I read that it was possible. And I thought that sounds like fun. I'm going to see if I can do it. Look! So these are my two little avocado trees. I mean, they are tiny, and that's taken, well, since the start of lockdown, so since March, <laughs> but look how fun, I'm so pleased with them, I'm going to show you them on this camera because you can see it a bit better, and this, I mean, look at the roots on that, can you see that, they're so strange looking. But I think that looks so cool. And then this one's not quite as far. It's taller, but the roots aren't quite as mad. But how cool is that? I just had to show you, I'm so pleased with myself. <laughs> and I just think they look really cute. So I'm gonna have to plant them in pots soon. Um, I need to kind of Google and see what the next steps are. But yeah, so that was my little lockdown project. And I feel like it's gone quite well. It was so funny though, it was so frustrating for about, I think it must have been close to like four months. Absolutely nothing happened at all. And I've just got these two little seeds in cups of water. And anytime anyone saw them, they'd be like, what are you doing? But it's happened now <laughs> so yeah but slightly sidetracked but it's still to do with avocados How, they are neat aren't they a little citrus yes I need to put a little bit of citrus in this in a wee second mm -hmm. 
right on the counter to ripen and then fry. so that is what I was doing so that seems right that's good then because that did always seem to work quite well for me but I thought if there's another way of getting it better that would be ideal right I've got a wee bit it, they do look quite tropical don't they I'm quite excited to put them into little pots and kind of see how they look in that and maybe eventually put them outside or uh, they might be house plants I'm not sure so lots of lemon juice because I love lemon juice and then I'm just gonna squish it up a little bit Yum. And then, so I think quite a lot of people add like onions and some people even add sort of tomatoes or some salsa if you've got salsa. That's quite nice as well. I think today I'm just going to add some coriander and some spring onions. And I think that's, I think that'll do me. If an avocado is underripe, you can also attempt to age it longer. Ah, so you brush lemon juice on both halves, wrap them in plastic and put them back in the fridge. Ah, that's clever. I'll need to try that the next time I get an avocado because quite often I'll get one and I'll cut it open and then go, oh, it's rubber. I don't know what to do with this now. <laughs> and I don't like throwing things out, but if that would help me use it and like for it to become ripe that sounds ideal thank you for that loco no i'm definitely going to try that that sounds exactly what i was looking for <laughs> right and then we've got some coriander i love coriander so i'll probably put too much coriander in to me better looks a bit funky. Get rid of that. And so many fruits and veggies from Mexico during off season months. Of course, yeah. So I don't even know where these are from Mexico as well. These avocados, that's bad. Yeah. And tomatoes are the worst for me. Oh really? See, I I don't actually mind an unripe tomato. I quite like them because then I think you're supposed to store tomatoes in like not in the fridge at room temperature. Is that right? I feel like I've heard that somewhere. But I really, really like proper cold, hard tomatoes. That's, that's what I'd prefer. <laughs> but yeah, I suppose if it's not actually ripe and if it's like green and I'm just not there. I found, so we get um, like a vegetable delivery box every week and it comes with just like the seasonal stuff and it's all, or they try and grow as much of it as they can nearby, um, which is really, really cool. But we got was it a couple of weeks ago I got an, a pineapple tomato which I thought was really really cool and it was huge I mean it was about the size of like four regular tomatoes and it had almost no seeds in it at all which I really like because I'm not a big fan of like the that kind of gel stuff around the seeds I much prefer if they've not got as many seeds so I'm gonna try I like to grow my own veg. I've failed miserably this year, but I'm gonna try and grow some pineapple tomatoes next year, I think, because they were so cool. Ah, hothouse tomatoes are much more reliable. Yeah. A much larger, ah, okay. See, I just, I just like, 
I just like a really cold tomato. <laughs> oh, smell of so Me too. And it took a while for us to get it set up because um, they actually, it's quite a small company and they ended up getting too many people subscribed and they were like, we can't cope with all of this. We have to build a new fa well, factory warehouse kind of thing. So they did a few like, I think it was a Kickstarter or a crowd crowdfunder to get a bigger factory or warehouse. And now they can send out boxes to loads, loads of new places. And one thing that we thought was really, really cool is they've actually just started using an electric van to deliver the boxes. So that's even better. <laughs> this subscriber went, oh, nice. So what do you know what kind of things you're going to get in it? In this winter agricultural box. I love stuff like that. And some people say, oh, well, I don't like the thought of that because you don't know what you're going to get and you can't plan your meals and stuff. But I always just kind of think, well, it's a bit of an adventure. And then sometimes I'll get some veg in it that I wouldn't ever buy at the supermarket. So I have to do a bit of research and be like, right, what do I do with this? What can I put it in? What does it go with? And then it makes me a lot more, like the food that I eat is a lot more interesting then. So yeah, I'm totally with you on that. Practical escapist. So I've just finely chopped up my coriander. Not well, roughly probably rather um, and then I'm gonna do a quite big spring onion so maybe just do one chili is getting thicker they, oh, see that? and that's the thing with these look so these are ones that we got from the farm and they are still full of dirt which I quite like so we get a box and the box is literally full of dirt <laughs> And then it makes a bit of a mess of the fridge, but it's good fun. Nice. Carrots, potatoes, guess we will see. Oh, that's exciting. I want to hear all about it once you start getting it. You're in Canada, by the way. Nice. Whereabouts in Canada? I'm saying that like I know Canada. <laughs> I've never been to Canada. I don't know it very well, but if it's one of the big cities, I will have heard of it at least. <laughs> hydrate. Thank you very much. I am going to hydrate in a wee second. I'm just going to finish chopping up my onions. I like organic stuff, but they have extra dirt. That's it. And I think, like, I think because I have grown a bit in the garden, I mean, this year was a waste of time, but last year was quite good. So I think that helped me kind of get used to having, like, dirt, having to take, get the dirt off your veg before you could eat it. But, yeah, no, that's... Mm, so was that eater and was that ones that you'd bought at the shop that had dead spiders in? That would freak me out. I'm not okay with that. <laughs> New Brunswick, super furry close name. Nice, that sounds cool though. But yeah, I've not heard of that, but that sounds cool. So do you get crazy winters and stuff as well? Is that just all of Canada that gets that? There we go. A large supermarket. Oh, see that? that? That would put me off. I mean, I know that most of the time they can't really do anything about it because it's inside the broccoli. But I still think, mm, no, thank you. <laughs> oh, really? The most extreme? Because I just always remember, I don't know if it is actually from Canada. But I just remember you always see the, like, if we ever start complaining about snow, because we don't get a lot of snow here, but we're not, we're not built for snow at all. Um, and we always get, if we start moaning about the snow, you see the, it's that one picture that goes around the internet, and it's 
it's like meanwhile in Canada and there's a car or a truck or something driving through and it's just walls of snow at either side. So that's what I always picture Canada winters to be. <laughs> Hot summers and very cold and snowy. But yeah, yeah, that's that's how I would expect it. But as long as that's what you like, I suppose. Hot, I think it's, yeah. I mean, if you get a bit of both, sometimes that's quite nice because we just tend to get rain. <laughs> Which, I mean, for some people that's maybe okay, but not everybody's a fan. 40 centimetres. Nah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Ah, right, yeah. Well, that's that's the thing because, I mean, driving in that must be the scariest thing. Because I've driven in quite a lot of snow in Germany before. And I honestly have never been so afraid in my life. Because it's just so... It's so, like, um, unpredictable, and you just feel like you've got no control over it at all. Tunnels dug just to drive on a road and wind. Ah, uh, yeah, we get rain and wind. <laughs> Those were the days. Is, do you miss it, Loco? <laughs> uh, right, I'm just going to finish getting rid of some of this stuff, and then we can start putting stuff together, making sure the chili's okay. Was there anything else I wanted to do? I don't think so. I've now got the second cat sitting looking at me. Oh, the sweet corn. I forgot to put the sweet corn in. I can do that now. Yeah, of course, the ice, yeah. And that's it, you don't see the ice nearly as well. So you've got no idea when it's coming and it just appears on you. And then it's too late. Wow, in 30 years, jeez, it must have been really bad then. But yeah, I think sometimes that's why it's quite nice in winter just to be like, yeah, I'll just stay in the house, thanks. <laughs> so much snow in a three week span. Jeez. I think the last time that we had a lot of snow, was that last year? I feel like I've got absolutely no concept of time anymore. It must have been last year. So it was last March. And it was the very first time that I actually got snowed in my house. And I mean, the snow wasn't, I mean, it wasn't overly high, but I didn't actually own any shoes or boots that I could wear to go outside that wouldn't, that like wouldn't let the snow in the top off. <laughs> so that was crazy. I mean, that's the most snow I've ever seen here. And it, luckily it doesn't happen very often, but it was it was nuts and everything was cancelled no one could leave their houses it, that was a that was a strange strange situation especially since we're not used to it so the chili's looking pretty good yeah and it felt so silly as well because i was like i actually can't leave the house because i don't have the right shoes <laughs> i need like wellies or something which i do not have unfortunately <laughs> And to be honest, you would think I would learn from that, but I've not, I still haven't actually bought myself any proper shoes, which is a bit silly. Oh, no problem, Gravy Smink. Thank you very much for being here again. I hope you enjoyed. And yes, oh, I will. And I hope, hopefully see you again next time. Friday, four o'clock. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what day is it today? Friday at four. And I'll pop a finished picture on my Discord when I'm finished so you can have a wee look at it there. So I'm not going to add all of the sweet corn. Just as much as I fancy because I'm not, I'm not a huge sweet corn fan. I think that looks pretty good. I 
make a friend. Hello, I see you. Hello, I'll get you done in a minute. <laughs> get a shadow. Right, um, I'm gonna try the chili again now and use up my last wee spoon just to see if it needs anything else. And I might check if a bean is cooked. Mm. Ooh. That's really nice, actually. <laughs> it's so, I'm so happy when it works out like that. That when you just kind of throw things together, you're like, oh, it worked. <laughs> A little bit of salt. And then I think. Oh, so the last thing, still fiery. It doesn't taste quite as fiery now. Possibly because I took, I mean, most of that spoonful was a bean and not a huge amount of the sauce. <laughs> but I have, so I don't tend, I love sour cream but I don't tend to use a lot of it when I'm making stuff like this. I quite often will just use some yogurt. So I've just got some plain alpha yogurt and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on the top um, and that'll hopefully calm it down again as well. But before I do that, what I'm gonna do is, because we were talking about the, well that's a shame, gravy smink's just a wee, but I'm gonna try a bit of a sweet butter on the cornbread to see if I like that. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna try it with maple syrup. Hello, you're just trying to trip me up, aren't you? Yes. Uh, you like? <laughs> you're not making this easy for me. She's making it like an obstacle course in the kitchen, which is really helpful. I know, I'm the same, like, I, I love sour cream, but I feel like if I have, um, if I have Greek yogurt, I'm like, oh, that's a bit healthier, right? So I can have more of it, but if I'm treating myself and I'm just going all out, sour cream all the way. <laughs> Right, let's see. I'm intrigued about this. I'm not gonna make, I could actually show you what I'm doing as well, can I? I'm not gonna make too much because I'm only gonna put a tiny bit on. And this is, this is unsalted butter. Does that make a difference? Hello. I think I'm gonna need more syrup than that. That didn't seem like a lot. I just can't imagine what this is gonna taste like. I feel like this is something that someone came up with when they'd had a few too many drinks. <laughs> oh, have I done too much now? Oh, it's almost separating, is that what we want? <laughs> oh dear. Is this what we expected this to look like? It won't come together. I don't think this is working. That looks awful. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try it anyway and we'll see. <laughs> Have I got another wee bit? I'll need to cut another wee bit off. If you need to warm it. 
Do you think I should warm the butter? Look out, or should I warm the bread? The, mm, the bread's a tiny bit warm, but not really. Oh, that's so good, that bread. I'm so impressed with that. This looks weird, though. Warm the butter, right. I'm just waiting for my microwave to explode. <laughs> ah, that looks better. No, that, see that looks more like a kind of a liquid now. I think I've probably done it for too long. But I'm just going to put some of this on. Because that seems like a good idea now. Right. Bottoms up. Hmm. Okay. Okay. No, I see that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't say... I don't think that works with chili. <laughs> no. But, for like breakfast or something. Mm-hmm. Okay. You've converted me. Do you know what I think would be really nice on that? I took far too big a bit and now I can't eat it. <laughs> um, jam. <laughs> I think jam would work really, really nice on that bread. Mmm. No, that's, that's good. Okay, I take it all back. And I suppose I could see that if, because you quite often get like the fried chicken where you get the kind of syrup on it. So I could, yeah, I could see that with that, but I think I'm happy with it savoury on, with the chilli. And then I'd be quite happy with that as like a dessert or I think probably a breakfast. It feels quite breakfasty. I was thinking stra Ooh, strawberries and cream might be quite nice as well, actually. I'm, d I'm definitely making that cornbread again because that is delicious. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> right, so I think I will start putting things together now. Ah, I'm trying to mix sweet with savoury. See, I like, if I eat like cheese with crackers, I really like like a caramelised onion chutney. But sweet dried figs does sound good too. And I could see how that would work. I just think there are quite a lot of like um, sweet and savoury things that to me just sound a bit odd. <laughs> But I suppose that's the thing, it's each to their own. Right, and then we reckoned what little chunks of this. I think I might do... Like that, because then I can kind of put that on the side. It's all about the photos. <laughs> it has to look good for the photos. <laughs> Oh yeah, that looks good now. Nice and thick as well. Um, where's my spoon? Everything is plain hide and seek today. Where is my spoon? There's, mm, there's a big one. So everyone that's still in the chat, would you normally go for a veggie chilli or would you have a meat chilli? I think for me it would depend on what I felt like that day. I don't think I would say one is nicer than the other. Mmm, 
Yum. So that's what our chili looks like so far. Meat all the way. <laughs> that's fully understandable. That looks quite nice. Does it, mm. Meat for you. Oh, we've got two meat. <laughs> <laughs> Very much a meat meatarian? Meat meatarian or meatarian? Meatarian? Both of those sound a bit weird. <laughs> a meatarian. During the week I'll try to eat veggie or maybe chicken or turkey. Yeah. That's good then. And it's good to have a bit of um like an option. I'm vegetarian myself. Nice. Always go veg, yeah. See, I am not a vegetarian. I just try to eat as much vegetarian food as I can. And I find that I mostly eat non-vegetarian food if I ever, not that it's happened anything recently, but if I ever go out for dinner or for lunch or whatever, that I find that quite often if you, if you get a gluten-free option, the gluten-free option isn't vegetarian as well. So I kind of, I'm often just kind of stuck with whatever I can have if I'm out. Um, but during the week, and when I cook, it tends to be vegetarian. Meat for me, nice. So we're what? What's that? One, two, three, three and a half. <laughs> three and a half meat. And then two and a half veggie. That's not too bad. I'm meat only chili during the weekend, nice. And I love nachos as well so I like to make a load of chili and then put them on nachos and top it with cheese and sour cream yes so it has I mean so I'm not celiac but I am quite badly gluten intolerant so I haven't eaten gluten well I stopped I stopped eating gluten when I, what was that, four years ago? Four and a half years? Nearly five. Four and a half years ago. And then I had to eat it again to get my celiac test. But then I came off it as soon as I got the results for that. So not celiac, but it doesn't agree with me at all. So I think, well, why would I eat it if it's going to make me unwell? So the first is always, is it gluten free? And then if it is gluten free, is there a vegetarian option? If not, plus, does it have chickpeas in it? Because then I can't eat it either. <laughs> so I am an absolute joy to go out for dinner with. <laughs> but I just think, well, I don't want to be unwell. Surely the people who are in the, like, who run the restaurant don't want their, their customers to be unwell. So, how much flour? I have never even heard of it. What is that, Luco? Tamut flower. It sounds like something I'd be able to get on Amazon. Do I want... I feel like if I put this, the yogurt on, I'm going to ruin the, the presentation. Because I'm obsessed, I'm going to put a little bit more coriander, purely for presentation. It's a flower with kumut. Hmm, that sounds intriguing. I have never heard of it, but I will, once I come off here, I will definitely go away and Google it. Because that would be, I'm always up for trying new gluten-free things. I think my most recent one was the, is it konjac? Konjac? Konjac, I think you would say. Um, konjac noodles, which are really, really good. I am a big fan. Especially since you don't get a lot of good gluten-free noodles. Ah, okay. As long as you aren't celiac, people can eat it or gluten Hmm. I will have a look into that because that sounds quite interesting.
Yeah, because there's quite a lot of things, like if it's um, sort of cross-contamination and stuff, but obviously if you're, um, if you're gluten intolerant, it's okay, but I'll definitely need to have a look into that. Right. I don't know whether to put in the health benefits. Ah, so it's actually better for you. I'll definitely have a look into that because it's something I've never ever heard of, but it does sound very interesting. Right, so that is our finished bowl of chilli. Finished chilli? Finished. Oh, thank you very much, Luco. If you've got one, that would be ideal. Because I'd like to have a wee up at that. That sounds really interesting. Oh, it's, so it's something that you use and you like it then, I'm assuming. I'll have a look and I might come to you for like recipes and things. <laughs> um, no, I'm not going to put any the food nanny. I don't think that's one I've heard of. I love the Food Network. I don't think I've seen the Food Nanny. I should write a list of things I want to Google when I come on. <laughs> so does she use it then? I'll def definitely look into this. But I'm not going to put any yogurt on because I think it looks nicer like this. I'm going to take a couple pictures. I can find my phone. Oh, thank you, Luco, I've just seen it. <laughs> I will take a couple of pictures and then I'll be quite like, ah. And I want to get that cornbread in. Nice. Oh, she sells it. Ah, okay. That sounds cool. Yes, I'll definitely go and have a nose at that and see if that's something that I think I would be able to eat. Thank you very much for that. I will do, and I will let you know what I think once I've had a wee, no a wee nosy. Got to get the right angles. It's all about the angles. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. So that is our bean chilli, veggie bean chilli with cornbread, which I'm so happy with. I'm so, I really, really, I really, really like the taste of it and I think it'll work nicely with the chilli. And then some of our homemade guacamole and some coriander. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to go and eat this. Then just having a bread that you can use for anything. Yeah, definitely. Nice. See, I normally just buy like the, the pre-made kind of pack. Just like the gluten-free flour blends, but that would be that would be good to know if that's if that works well. Oh, right. So I think I'll finish up about here. Um, <laughs> I am glad you didn't, and I think you should stream it so that I can see. But are you are you going to do a meat one then? That'll be good. And will you put any beans in it or will it just be meat? Looks so good. Thank you very much, Dino Doll. I am looking forward to going and eating it. If I turn it around this way, you can actually see it properly. Um, right, I'm going to have a really quick look and see who is on. Casey is on. Yay! I didn't think we were, well, I thought I was going to be able to read him yesterday and he was so late coming on. <laughs> So we can do that today. I would say Casey is one of my favourite streamers. I think his streams are fantastic. He's so chilled out. Plus, if like me, you love a bit of Sean Connery, he, you can redeem your channel points for a Sean Connery impression and I promise you it's worth it. <laughs> as soon as it goes in here, I feel like chilling cornbread. Nay, yeah, it's very much an autumn dish I feel, but I've just realised my pot's actually still on. <laughs> Oops. Um, but yeah, I, I really like it when it starts to get a bit cooler. Although it's it's funny because it has been cooler and today's actually quite a nice day, but I'll still enjoy my chilli and my cornbread. So I'm looking forward to it. 
for meal prep during the week so it'll be meatless but probably not veg yeah no that sounds good though nice well if you don't stream it then take a picture and show me so that I can see because I love nosy and other people's food <laughs> Casey is great Casey is fantastic he is one of a kind that should go on <laughs> it's so funny because he said that that was um that was inspired by me, so I feel like every time I go on, I'm like, the first thing I do is make him speak Sean Connery. Okay. So, let's go. I'm gonna have a quick, what's he actually, what's he making? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, come on. Why are you being so slow? He is making... Tamarind pork soup. Mmm. That sounds interesting. I'm getting an ad, but I'm sure he's probably started already. So, yes, please, let's all go over. <gasps> and his chef apron looks amazing. His chef jacket, sorry. So, let's all go over and give Casey some love. Oh, thank you, Practical Escape. <laughs> I'm quite pleased in my kitchen, I'm not going to lie. It's. it's it's handy, it works really well for the streams, it's a, it's a good layout and it's nice and big so I can make a lot of me before I'm like stuck for workshop space. <laughs> right, so I'm gonna press raid, let's go over and give them some love. If you do make a chilli, please let me know. Um, yeah, and I'm on Discord, so there's a link in here somewhere. And if not, it's on my, my channel page, if that's what it's called. Um, so definitely go over and have a nose at that. Leave some pictures if you make anything. I hope you all have a good rest of Wednesday. And thank you very much for being here. I had a lovely time, as usual, with you all. And let's go and give Casey some love. You will enjoy it. I know you will because he's just fantastic. And tell him I sent you. <laughs> right, and I shall see you all on, hopefully, on Friday at four o'clock. Thank you all for being here. Let's go and read them. Every time, every single time I do the wrong one. Every time. I will get this right eventually. There we go. <laughs> Are we ready? Are we ready? <laughs> That's all right, you turn. It's late in the day. Right, are we ready? Are we ready? I think we're all ready. Right, let's go. <laughs> 